type of breakdown and sync crash. So I never really finished my talk of uh, difficulty spikes because I was too busy getting my ass handed to me on Spaced Out. So, I'd say Crash 3 is the easiest, which makes it the more nostalgic game for me because it's the one where I know I don't have to try very much and I can get my nostalgia juice and kind of just go, you know what I mean? But uh, with uh, Crash and Crash Team Racing is just a kart racer, so you get the same kind of like, oh, I don't really need to try, it's fine. Crash 1 I have a lot of experience with, so I don't really have much trouble aside from High Road and Slippery Climb, of course, because that's the ones everyone has trouble with. And the final bosses aren't exactly a cakewalk, but they're still like within the realm of like, okay, this makes sense. You know what I mean? Like it's what we've been doing up until this point. Crash 2, it goes cakewalk, first, second thing, third walk room, it starts to go up a little bit and you're like, okay, okay, I, I see what you're asking from me. It's a, it's a bit hard. Um, you know what I mean? And you're like, oh, okay, fine, that's fine. Um, then it comes to Warp Room 4, and you're just like, this is fucking hard. We've got to be near the end of the game. And then it suddenly drops, and we have Piston It Away being really just an introduction to this tile set, Rocket being an introduction to the jetpack. This, I didn't even really die, I don't think. I'm, I'd have to check the old video, and I'm lazy. Um, this was bullshit, but doable. And this is just hell. And you're thinking, this is like basically a summation of the game's difficulty level in the final walkthrough. It goes, it resets, and you're back at like Turtle Woods difficulty almost. Not as easy, but close. And then it's gradually building again. And sh you know, then it's gradually building and then you're hitting like Warp Room 4 again difficulty. And it's like, I don't know what made them think, we're going to build the tension up to Warp Room 4, then cut it, and then do a mini peak again. But it kind of works, but it's also heavily frustrating. And I'm going to show you why I hate this game. It's that the final boss is not a summation of all the platforming skill that you've learned up until this um, point put into a very hard challenge. It's, hey... You know we introduced two rocket levels and they were the worst levels in the game and were like stress and anxiety inducing nightmares and they have a really weird physics and camera angle and they're difficult? Yeah, okay, let's turn that into a racing game. And you're about to see why it's bullshit. Also, Crash and Cortex can just breathe in fucking space. So yeah, there's that. You gotta hit him three times and not get squished by a meteor because that slows you down. Or kills you, I can't remember. And he's fast! He's really fast! And my depth perception fucking sucks. So we're also doing this thing where I'm like, oh great, I can't see shit. And now he's gone. This is basically means I failed. Oh, he waits. In the original game, he didn't wait. <laughs> like, he didn't wait, he just left you to die. And you were like, oh well, I hit one thing, that's it, game over. And I'm not even kidding. This is way easier, this is like... So I've been ranting about this for the entire LP, and it's... It's actually like he gives you a lot of options. But you see, he didn't wait for me that time. And the mines used to just insta-kill you. So at least they knew what the problems were. Oh, I got speeches. Okay. I feel like that was... Oh. We were fairly near the end of that level, though. That was all it had. That used to be much harder. Basically, Yo Dog 
you didn't get all of the crystals, uh, all of the gems. So he hasn't been nuked out of orbit by Embryo. You've got to help Embryo. So that was four minutes. I was literally expecting it to be as bad as it originally was. Because when I did the secret, uh, the crash warp secret um, level um, rings of power, that's still fucking hard. And I thought, okay, if that's hard, the final boss of Crash 2 will be hard because that jetpack handled like shit. And when I played the levels, I thought it still handles like shit. Uh, but clearly they've like tightened it up. Which I've got to admit, for a HD re-release, they did a lot of work to actually make the things that were just total bullshit due to the limitations of the console uh, actually playable uh, without you literally sitting there going, hey, they've made it too easy, and without you also sitting there thinking, what the fuck, this is just exactly why I hate these games. So they've managed to make Crash 2 palatable for someone who used to whine his tits off about the... Um, so good on them. But still, that's not how you do a boss fight, is it? You spend, like, think about how Crash 1 and 3's Cortex fight work out. It's, uh, learn, use everything you've learned as a platforming game to beat a very hard series of platforming challenges. That's what all of them are in 3, except for the mech fight with Engine, which is fine. That's what all of them are in this game, except for Cortex is. And that's definitely what all of them were in Crash 1, because they really didn't do all these vehicle sections except for the pig ride, and that's not a boss fight. Right in queue with the pig noiser. And, uh, yeah, like, you're sat there like, the worst, like, bad boss design is to take a level that you've introduced potentially only five minutes ago for some players who are particularly good at getting through the final walk room, and only about half an hour for say me, uh, since I last played it. And you're sat there like, uh, you're basically saying to me that, uh, you're basically saying to me then, oh, okay, that's the final boss, and it's a bit of a letdown, even if it's, like, better done, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like it's now trivial. Before it was frustrating, and now it's trivial. It's like, because it's not... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's not interesting, it's not a fight, you're just spinning his jetpack three times. Then you spin his jetpack three times and you win. He's got he's got a lower health bar than some of the other members of his own fucking team, hasn't he? And like, I'm glad they made it easier. But let's face it, it's not exactly the funnest boss fight. It's just oh. You know, you don't feel like he's not fighting back, he's just trying to run away, you're just hitting him. I mean, I haven't got anything else to say about it. So that's the end of my least favorite of the Crash games. And, like, I know I say that a lot and make it sound like Crash 2 sucks. It doesn't suck. It's fine. I just really have nostalgia for 3 and one, and I like three more because it's more accessible than one, and has more secret levels than one did, that I cared about more than three, and it had that variety, which as a child, you're gonna obviously go, oh, I can ride a tiger, I can fly a plane, I can drive a truck, drive, drive, drive a motorbike, I can fly aliens, I'm on a jet ski, we're going all over the world at different times, in future and past, there's future levels, there's past levels, they're themed. And then if you go backwards like I do, because I said before my original play was 1 until 100%, then 3, then 2. 
So, um, you know, going backwards from three to two makes you go, wow, the feeling of two is dishwater in comparison. What, you got sewer levels, machinery levels, a fuck ton of snow levels, snow covered levels, couple of boulder levels, a couple of levels which were essentially boulder levels but they replaced it with a bear, and uh, a few surfing levels. And the surfing levels are cool, but um, you're essentially going, okay, so this is like a drabber themed Crash 3. It's essentially DLC for Crash 3 if you play it that way around, where you're just like, oh, this is just not as fun. And like, um, not as diverting, I mean. And, you know, it just doesn't hold your attention because it's not as varied. But, like, um, it's not even that bad, you know? It's like, there's a lot of good shit in this. It's just, I don't care for it very much because it's just, oh, look, snow. Oh, look, boulder. Oh, look, sewers, you know? It's just like, no one's going to sit there and think, oh, great, sewer level, man. I mean, they're all right, but, like, it's just, like, the, the takeaway feeling I get from Crash Bandicoot 2 is always just kind of like frustration and annoyance and this constant feeling of like, oh fuck you, that's unfair. And uh, oh fuck you, I don't deserve that. And oh fuck you, that, oh, that feels trolly as shit. Especially when there's nitros hot like that. And uh... Yeah, like, it introduced a lot of shit that I was just not aware of because the secret levels, for me, were way better outlined in Crash 3 and better signposted. But, um, you know, I guess the fact that they're not signposted in 2 is what makes them secret and then there's all of that shit. Um, I would be interested, actually, because I don't think I ever actually bothered to 100% Crash 2. I just watched the ending on YouTube years later and was like, oh, that, that's what happens, okay, fine. Because it's just like, and it plays the ending of Crash 2 at the beginning of Crash 3, because the 100% ending, because weirdly, the 100% ending that no one ever sees on these platformers is actually the uh, canon ending in the Crash series. So, like, the end of Crash 1 is not the canon ending, because he doesn't defeat Cortex if you do that, but um, I don't think they were planning for a uh, full, like, storyline at that point. And then Crash 2, the ending of Crash 2 leads into Crash 3, and the ending of Crash 3 leads nowhere, because then after that they made a kart racer, a party game, and then a bunch of other companies took it and decided to do all sorts of bullshit, which I just do not agree with. Like, they were trying to be edgy at some points, they were trying to get Crash to punch animals at one point, using Skylanders as DLC at some point, it's just like, it's just fucking dumb after a while. Uh, what was the absolute worst, though? The, the absolute worst I got was, um... Uh... They tried to re-up Tiny Tiger as some, like, more softly spoken beret wearing Mike Tyson alike in Crash Twin Sanity, and it was just done as a pull, and you were like, oh, okay, they, they're shaking up the script. That's interesting. They should definitely do more of that, and then he never reappears for the entire game, and you're like, you're just doing this to be a dick, then. You know, you're just you're just throwing that in there to get tiny people triggered. who are like, oh, no, that's not what tiny is about, man. Making him sound super camp. But, like, actually, it's like... It was done for, like, trailer fodder, you know what I mean? To get people talking about the internet back in... Back before even Tumblr baiting really was a thing, they were Tumblr baiting with tiny of all people. <laughs> so look, we did it, we did it. Can we just go up? We cannot. I thought if we go up, we will get to the secret warp room. I can't remember how to, but I thought when you finish the game, 
you just unlock the secret warp room, but I think you actually have to eat some stuff. Tell you what, we'll cut there. It's only 15 minutes and most of it was the critiquing the game. Yeah, and then we'll, I'll do some after hours shit. And then, do not expect me to 100% this, but if I do, I've got too much time on my hands, which I don't, so, yeah. Bye-bye.